Hello, and welcome to another session of the EDOX training series. My name is Chris Gruber, and today I'll be showing you upgrading to EDOX 16, in which we go step by step through the process of upgrading an existing EDOX environment to EDOX 16.1, the latest version of our software. This tutorial is designed for administrators who are already familiar with the installation of EDOX server and its components, as well as SQL databases. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover. First, we'll discuss preliminaries, such as prerequisites and things to consider before going forward, as well as an overview of 16. Next, we'll go over upgrading to EDOX 16 in a 531 environment, then we'll cover upgrading to EDOX 16 in a 10 environment. The instructions for each are similar, but not exact, so strict attention should be paid. Then we'll walk through the steps to update EDOX Management Studio, also known as EDMS. And finally, we'll take a look at upgrading both the consumer webtop and the classic webtop, as well as the client software. Ready? Excellent. Let's begin. EDOX 16.1 is the newest version of our document management software, combining both features that users have come to rely on for more than two decades, as well as improvements and new features that make the work of managing documents that much easier. Some of these new features, like flex folders, Shared workspaces and lookup security, for example, are configured on the server side and are easily set up in the EDOX Management Studio. This video does not focus on installing and setting up an EDOX 16 environment for the first time. Instead, it's strictly about the process of upgrading existing EDOX environments to version 16. We assume the viewer is an administrator with full rights to both software installation and modification of the database. If you're preparing an upgrade to EDOX 16, Make sure you've planned things out in advance. It's best to, and we firmly urge you to, view all the steps in this video well in advance of the actual upgrade. We also highly recommend running through this process in a test environment before doing so in production. This way, any issues found, whether specific to configuration, environment, customizations, or human error, can be addressed and remedied ahead of time. Please note, this video is not intended to replace or act as a substitute for the official documentation. Instead, it's meant to supplement it, and, as such, we strongly urge that you read, review, and keep it handy during this process. Let's quickly go over a couple of things. First, EDOC's DM server is now a 64-bit application, allowing it to perform better as it takes full advantage of system resources. As for supported environments and applications, the server software requires Windows Server 2008 R2 or later, and either Microsoft SQL Server 2008 or later, or Oracle version 11G R2 or 12C. If you're using Oracle in your environment, you need to install both the 32 and the 64-bit Oracle clients before upgrading to EDOC 16. For best performance, we recommend at least eight gigabytes of RAM on the database server, the EDOC application server, and the user workstation. For full information on supported platforms and applications, please review the release notes. If your EDOC environment is older than 531, then you need to upgrade the server and database components to 531 patch 1 before proceeding with an upgrade to 16. Prior to the upgrade process, make sure you have a recent backup of your existing databases. We strongly recommend, heck, we insist you create these backups. If you're using a duplicate of a production database for any testing purpose, review KB367-9408 in the Open Text Knowledge Center before proceeding to prevent any possible corruption. Additionally, Check with both the Knowledge Center and EDOC support for any recent updates, patches, fixes, add-ons, or changes to our software or procedures, as well as any concerns that may be specific to your environment. Let's go over the prerequisites. First, your existing EDOC serial numbers are valid for 16. Keep these handy. Next, EDOC 16 requires Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5.2 or greater for EDOC servers, version 4.5 or greater for clients, and the Visual C++ 2015 redistributable for EDOX servers and clients. These can be found on the Microsoft Download Center and must be installed prior to upgrade. Make sure to allow enough storage space for the installation log. We recommend setting aside at least as much space as 50% of the current database size. For example, if your database is 5 gigabytes, make sure you have at least 2.5 gigabytes free for the log file. If you run out of space during the upgrade, it will fail, the database will have to be restored from backup, and you must restart the entire upgrade process. It's best to rebuild any EDOX indexes after upgrading. If you'd prefer to continue using existing indexes, there's a process to upgrade them, so check the documentation first. 
If your eDocs environment uses custom SQL triggers, they need to be updated after the upgrade of the database if you intend to continue using them. There are a couple of upgrade paths to take, depending on the version you're currently at, upgrading from 5.3.1 or from 10. If you're upgrading from a version prior to these, first upgrade to 5.3.1, as previously mentioned. And if you're migrating from a prior release of 16, like a beta or other pre-release version, you cannot upgrade to EDOC 16. You will need a fresh setup. Assuming you're starting with either 5.3.1 or 10, let's proceed. This first section covers upgrading from 5.3.1. We'll review upgrading from 10 in the section that follows. A new library upgrade utility is installed as part of the eDocs server installation, which, in order to implement certain new features, adds new columns to several existing tables, adds new tables, and alters the format of several columns. For specifics on what changes are made, review Chapter 2 of the eDocs 16.1 installation guide and the latest version of the eDocs 16.1 release notes. Any custom forms in your eDocs environment should be replaced or updated. At the very least, check them to be sure they work in the new eDocs 16 setup. It's best to recreate these forms so you can use the new features. You can perform upgrades on eDocs servers over time, with one exception. All eDocs servers in a single FOLB cluster must be updated at the same time. During a transitional phase where not all servers are yet upgraded, the eDocs 16 server can support 5.3.1 and 10 libraries. One word of caution, though. Allowing existing 5x servers to use 10 or 16 libraries could potentially cause data corruption. On the first eDocs server machine, you can uninstall the existing 5.3.1 software before installing the new version, but it isn't required. For this demonstration, we'll uninstall just to ensure we have a clean install. Next, run the eDocs 16.1 server MSI. It works just like the previous versions, so you'll need to specify the components and confirm the install path during the procedure. Next, install update 1 for eDocs 16.1, which can be downloaded from the OpenText Knowledge Center. This must be run after completing the server installation and before proceeding to the next step. Upgrade all clustered eDocs servers to 16, being sure to run update 1 after installing the initial server software. Note, when running the server software, you won't be prompted to run library generator on existing libraries. Once all servers are upgraded, stop and restart your eDocs server, then refresh all server caches, doing so on every eDocs server using an upgraded library. A word of caution, this must be done before running the upgrade utility. You cannot proceed with the upgrade until this is complete. Next, run the library upgrade utility against the library. This invokes library generator, which updates the database structure. Walk through the steps as you would normally in library generator. Note, during the upgrade, the library is unavailable for login. Each doc server can tell whether a library has been upgraded. When it completes, Run the upgrade utility again. This upgrades metadata to the new format. Enter login credentials, then click OK. In the upgrade utility window, notice there are some options available if your library uses eDocs RM or has any existing indexes. Consult the installation guide to be sure which options to choose. Then click Start Upgrade. When it finishes the upgrade, you'll be asked if you want to review the upgrade log. When this is done, restart any eDocs servers using upgraded libraries. When you finish upgrading all eDocs servers and libraries, install Management Studio to configure and administer the eDocs environment and its new features. We'll cover this in a later section of this video. This section is for those upgrading from eDocs 10 to 16. If you're upgrading from 5.3.1, rewind to the start of the previous section. In this section, we assume you have no remaining libraries at version 5.3.1 or earlier. To begin, on one of your eDocs servers, stop the eDocs services. When this finishes, run the eDocs 16.1 server MSI. It works just like previous versions, so you'll need to specify the components and confirm the install path during the procedure. Next, install update 1 for eDocs 16.1, which can be downloaded from the OpenText Knowledge Center. This must be run after completing the server installation and before proceeding to the next step. When it completes, reboot the machine. Do not upgrade the server software for all eDocs servers prior to upgrading the database. Now let's upgrade the eDocs libraries. Make sure the eDocs services are stopped on any other server machines first. This must be done before proceeding to the next step. Now run the library upgrade utility. This invokes library generator near the start, which updates the database structure. Walk through the steps as you would normally in library generator. When it completes, 
Run the upgrade utility again to update the database for the new Shared Workspaces feature. This is a smaller change to the database and shouldn't take long. Note, during the upgrade, the library is unavailable for login. Each eDocs server can tell whether a library has been upgraded. Next, run the server MSI on the remaining servers, whether they're app servers, index servers, or content cache servers, remembering to install Update 1 for eDocs 16.1. Then stop and restart the eDocs servers. Once they're restarted completely, refresh all server-side caches. The eDocs Management Studio, or EDMS, is a centralized place for administration of all your eDocs libraries and servers, as well as features like indexing, flex folders, lookup security, and more. EDMS was introduced in eDocs 10 and has only gotten better and more powerful since then. In 10, EDMS was an option, but with 16, it's now required that you have it installed and configured. In the previous version of EDMS, the security model was slightly different. In 10, you assign Management Studio rights based on specific tasks. However, in 16, you assign rights to either specific server clusters or rights to the entire setup. Run the DM16.1 Management Studio executable to install the new software. If you have a previous version of EDMS already installed, you could leave it in place or uninstall it first. Either way is fine. Next, log in to DM16.1 Management Studio with your user. For best results, make sure the user is a member of your library's Docs Supervisors group that is aliased to a domain account. If for some reason you don't see data under the Lookup Tables node, select Administrators towards the top of the window. Expand the Everyone node and select the user you're logged in as. Click Add Alias in the Aliases section, then add the domain alias corresponding to the user you're editing. Click Apply towards the bottom of the window, then exit the application. In Windows Services, restart the OpenText eDocs DM Server WCF host service. Finally, log back into EDMS, and the Lookup Tables node should be populated. This might take a little time depending on how many libraries are in your cluster. The Consumer Web Top is a streamlined web based interface for your eDocs setup, introduced with eDocs 10. Upgrading the eDocs Consumer Webtop is a straightforward affair, requiring little more than running the installation executable on the Webtop server. If you have multiple Consumer Webtop servers, you'll have to upgrade each of them prior to moving on to the section after this. The best way to upgrade the Consumer Webtop is to uninstall the existing Webtop and install it fresh. To do this, go to Programs and Features in the Control Panel, choose the entry for OpenText eDocs DM10 web server, then click Uninstall to remove it. If you're on 531, or if you simply do not have the Consumer Webtop installed, understandably, you won't need to remove it. However, the remainder of these instructions do apply. Run the eDocs DM16.1 web server MSI. At the welcome message, click Next. Click the checkbox marked, I accept the terms of the license agreement, then click Next. Specify the name of the DM server if it isn't otherwise showing, then click Next. Specify the domain name, account name, and password. Then re-enter the password to confirm it. Click Next. Then confirm the install path is correct, and click Next. Then click Install to begin the installation. When it's done, click Finish. You can then see in Programs and Features the new web server software has been installed. It's best to stop and restart the IIS web server before going live. If you're using the original webtop, what we refer to as classic webtop, whether in a 531 or 10 environment, you can upgrade to the newest version. Either version uses these same instructions. To begin, run the eDocs DM16.1 Classic Web Server MSI. Add the welcome message, click Next. Click the checkbox marked, I accept the terms of the license agreement, then click Next. Choose any of the modules you wish to include, such as the Workflow Client or the RM Client, and then click Next. Then, select the type of forms you wish to use in WebTop. You can choose to stick with the same type already in use, or select another type if you'd prefer. For more info on the different form types, check out Chapter 1, Section 10 of the eDocs 16.1 Installation Guide. Click Next. Specify the name of the DM server if the server name isn't otherwise showing, then click Next. Now, specify the domain name, account name, and password, then re-enter the password to confirm it. Click Next. Then confirm the install path is correct, and click Next. Then click Install to begin the installation. When the installer completes, click Finish.
You can then see in Programs and Features the new web server software has been installed. As with the consumer webtop, it's best to stop and restart the IIS web server before going live. Let's begin upgrading the client software on your users' workstations. Although eDocs 16 is backwards compatible, that is, clients at version 5.3.1 patch 1 or newer can connect to a 16 server, we generally recommend keeping the client software at the same version of eDocs as the server. Don't upgrade or install any client software until all eDocs servers and libraries are upgraded to 16. In 5.3.1 and 10, you might have installed eDocs Office integration separately from the regular extensions installation, and if you've installed Sync and Save, you also had a separate installer. In 16, this is streamlined. App integration and Sync and Save are now options in the installer. If you see these separate items in Programs and Features, uninstall them first. From here, you can either run the eDocs 16 installation to upgrade extensions or uninstall for a clean start. Run the eDocs DM 16.1 extensions installer. At the welcome message, click Next. In the License Agreement dialog, click the checkbox, then click Next. In the Custom Setup dialog, select the features to install. Available options include Office Integration, RM Extensions, and Sync and Save. For more information on these, check out Chapter 10 of the eDocs 16.1 Installation Guide. Once you've confirmed your selection, click Next. If you selected any Office applications, you'll need to select the type of app integration in the Integration Options dialog. Then, click Next. Note, if you select Imaging or RM Extensions, you'll need to provide a serial number and a password for each component chosen. Click Next. In the Destination Folder dialog, confirm the correct path, then click Next. In the Connection Information dialog, specify the eDocs server the client will connect to, then click Next. Click Install to begin installation, then click Finish when it's done. Once the client machine is rebooted, users can log in to eDocs extensions. This has been Upgrading to eDocs 16. For further information, we encourage you to review the documentation. Visit our YouTube channel to keep up with all videos in the eDocs training series. Did you like this video? Do you want to see more like it? Do you have ideas for other videos? Join the discussion on the eDocs DM forum in the Open Text Knowledge Center. Feel free to contact support if you need any further assistance. We'd be happy to help. And thank you for taking time to watch this video. We hope you found it useful and that you'll be back for more in the eDocs training series.